Hey there everyone, it's Anthony back with another video here on Single and Placing. Hi. <laughs> um, as you can see, we're in the car, we're doing a vlog. It's vlog day. So um, we I've actually been driving for a little while, we'll get to it. But um, I hope everyone's having a fantastic day, weekday, weekend, morning, whatever it is for you. Um, today, um, over here, um, it is Sunday morning and we're going on a hike. It's, it's going to be a fun hike day. Um, it's the end of October, um, almost the end of October, at least the time at the time of filming this, um, only one more day left of the month. And so I figured let's go on a little fall hike. It's going to be probably closer to winter hike, um, we're going up to Cataract Lake, which is in Silverthorne, Colorado. So about an hour and a half drive from where I am, but it is probably my most favorite hike um, in Colorado that I've been on so far. Anytime someone comes to visit, anytime someone moves here, they're like, what's a good hike? This is like my quintessential hike. It's a little late in the season, so we probably won't get all the beautiful wildflowers and all of that stuff. Um, but it, and the aspen trees might have already lost their leaves, but I'm hoping there's going to be some that have still held on. Um, I looked at the weather. It's very cold up there. I think we're looking at a high of 44 up there. And um, when I looked this morning when I was getting ready for the day, it was like 22. So it's going to be chilly. I've got my winter coat. I believe I've got my gloves. Yes, I've got my gloves. So I think I'm going to be okay. Um, I've got my hat. Apollo's got all of his fur, so we should be good. Um, but I took a look back. I could have sworn that I filmed a, a vlog on that trail before, but I don't think I have. I looked back in through my hike and chats, and I think the very first one that we did was Raccoon Trail. And then we did the Big Dog Park, which isn't really a trail. And then we've done uh, Sugarloaf Mountain. And then we did um, Table Mountain. So I think those are kind of the ones that we've done so far. So I'm like, why have I not done the big boy yet? And it's not that long of a hike. It's about, I think, two and a half miles, and it's a loop around the lake. But I usually go around twice because you can do it pretty quickly, and especially since you're making the big trip um, to and from Silverthorne, you might as well, you know, get your time out of it. So that's what we're going to do. Um, I'm not going to keep you too long on this clip because we're, um, we're already on the highway. So I started driving, got on the highway, and I was headed up there and was like, oh, but what if the leaves are changing? You should bring your good camera. And so I kept, I kept driving up the highway and just considering it, thinking about it, like, mm, I don't know. And then I got about 20 minutes up the highway, maybe like 15, and I was like, I'm doing it. I'm going to go back home and get the good camera because I'm going to be bummed if it's beautiful up there and I didn't bring my my actual like point and shoot um, as opposed to my phone. So now I went all the way back home just to grab the camera, um, grabbed a bite to eat, a little breakfast, and now we're headed up again for the second time. <laughs> Um, but it's okay. I wanted, you know, it was fine. Apollo's just, I mean, he's asleep back there and he sleeps so good in the car and he's just so good in the car. We might stop on the way to let him out to go potty. But other than that, he does not like freak out. He hasn't, you know, knock on wood. It doesn't really get car sick or motion sickness or anything. And ever since the first day I got him, when I first got him, um, I got him in the Springs, which is about an hour away, an hour and a half from where I live south. And he was on me a little bit when I first got him the first day and kind of freaking out. And then he sat in the passenger seat and fell asleep the entire drive back to the house. And I was like, if this is going to be how you are um, all the time, this is great. And he is. He's such a little car dog. He doesn't howl. He doesn't cry. He doesn't freak out. He just, he just, you can see his little bod down there. He just sleeps. So very lucky because I like to do road trips. I like to do these longer uh, day trips. So I am, I'm glad that, uh, 
I'm glad that he sleeps like that. So, anywho, um, trying to think of what else. Um, I'm not exactly sure which diamond painting I'll be cutting in with this, um, with this vlog. I'm, at the time of filming this, I'm a decent way through where the fun never ends. So by the time I get it all edited and uploaded and all that stuff um, for when it actually is supposed to go up, I might, I might be working on a different kit. I'm not too sure. And I've already done one vlog with Where the Fun Never Ends. Actually, I might have done two already. So I kind of want to change it up a little bit. So we shall see. Um, my other whips that I have going on right now are um, Star Maker. Um, Del, I think it's called Del Soul. It's that mystical diamond art one from, uh, by Andy Russell. And then I've got Senorita, uh, from Jaded Gem Shop. That's a Henry Clive image. And then, and then where the fun never ends. I guess just those four. Yeah. Unless there's something else I'm not thinking of. Um, I think that's it. <laughs> oh yeah, because I got rid of, um, Red Gate of Hongo and Snow. So yeah, just those four. And then uh, Composition, uh, Composition Monumental is done. And oh, by the way, so I mentioned in that series last week, ugh, um, I mentioned in that series that, um, that that kit came out in rounds. It was released in rounds as well. Well, in the mail uh, this morning before I um, hit the road, um, Robin over at Distracted by Diamond sent me around. So thank you so much, Robin. Oh my gosh. I was like, what? So now I have it in round. I think what I might do, I don't know if it's going to happen anytime soon, um, just because I have a lot of kits that I want to get to. Um, I still need to get, um, co is it cozy evening? I need to get that kitted up. Maybe that'll be what you see here. I'm not quite sure. You, when we cut to the clips, you'll, you'll see. And in the description, obviously, I'll put in um, I'll put it in, but, uh, ooh, maybe I'll even just do, oh, you know what I'm going to do? It's a done deal. I've decided I'm going to do time lapses of my kidding up in this vlog rather than doing the kitten chat, because then I can just jump into whipping chats for that. Cause that needs to get kitted up for, um, jingle drills. So that doesn't start for another, you know, few weeks by the time you see this or a couple of weeks but I can have it all prepped I've got the storage containers for it ready to go so I can at least get that prepped and then um, I don't have to stress about is it where the fun never ends is it not I can just uh, kit up cozy evening that's a gift for my aunt for um, who knows if I can get it done by Christmas great but if not then not Christmas <laughs> Um, just a gift as a gift. Um, and then I'm thinking I'm going to order a couple of craftably tubes or a few craftably tubes. That way I can, um, start sending completed diamond paintings like that. Or I guess I could just put it back in the box if it'll fit. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, so we'll do that. We'll intercut with me kidding up, uh, cozy evening that is, um, from, I think it's Abraham Hunter, I want to say. Is that the artist's name? Don't quote me on that. It might not be. <laughs> um, but yeah, we're just, we're just cruising along. We're coming through the town of, um, I think it's Genesee right now. And it's kind of up in the hills a little bit. Um, yeah, a little bit past where we went for Lookout Mountain. Oh, we went up to Lookout Mountain too. Did I mention that? Yeah, we went up there. Not really a hike. I just kind of did a clip of us up there at night. Um, but yeah, we went up to Lookout Mountain, so I'm excited. I can't believe that I've gone this entire summer without showing everyone um, Cataract Lake. Because I even came up here um, earlier this year with Apollo when he was younger. Um, it was, I think it was like his first big hike, you know? And I wanted it to be his first hike because I was like, oh, it's my favorite one and I want to show it to you. <laughs> so... We did that, and then there's a little, um, uh, during the summer, there's a brewery called Pug Ryan's, and they have a little pop-up tiki bar that they put up down by Lake Dillon, or Dillon Reservoir, and so 
usually what I'll do in the summer is go to the hike, do the hike, and then on my way home, stop at the little tiki bar and sit by the water and um, sit by the water and just hang out. So I brought Apollo there and um, we had our little lunch and stuff and then we went home. But I'm surprised I didn't film that. Like. I was diamond painting during that time. Maybe I hadn't committed to doing the hike and chats yet, but um, gosh, I wish I could flip the camera around. We're looking straight out at like these beautiful peaks, but we'll get to see a lot of cool stuff um, as we get closer. So anywho, well, I'm going to, I'm going to cut off this clip. I might turn it back on um, a little bit later in the drive, but we have a long drive ahead of us. There's a couple things that I, like specific topics that I do want to um, to bring up. So this isn't gonna be a total ramble. <laughs> um, there is like one particular topic that I just kind of want to pick everyone's brains about, get your opinion. So get those, get that comment tab up and ready to go because I'm gonna ask for some feedback or insights um, and perspective from all of you. So, um, all right, let me keep going. We're just coming up through Evergreen right now, and we've got we've got to drive. We've got to drive ahead of us. If I know if I see any really cool parts, then I'll be sure to uh, flip the camera around so you can see. Okay. Bye. <laughs> I don't know if you saw that. The police car freaked me out. And then there was a bunch of bighorn sheep on the other side. I don't know if you saw that. Go back and slow it down. Uh, I, I didn't even intend on, uh, did not even intend on starting the video right then. <laughs> it like, double freaked me out. I was like, am I speeding? Oh God, sheep. <laughs> um, I just wanted to pop on really quickly. Um, we're coming through uh, Georgetown pretty little mountain town and then um, I just kind of wanted to show you the view of uh, what we're driving through. This is definitely the, the uh, furthest up into uh, the mountains that we've gone together, that's for sure. So let me just turn this. Just coming around this little curve here. So we're probably about, mm, still about an hour away from the trailhead. Maybe like 25, 30 minutes from Silverthorne, which is like the closest town to Cataract Lake. So just wanted to stop in and do a little check in. We're making our way up the mountains. So yeah, um, trying to think of anything else that's happened on the drive. Not really. Um, I listened to, um, Katie did a How She Seals Her Diamond Paintings video that I just watched. Um, it's good. I, I've heard that sometimes that min wax that um, she uses can, um, can get a little crinkly, a little cracky, a little crunchy. Um, over time, I think, it just dries and um, it's not super flexible the longer it stays on the canvas, I think. I don't know. But I like her process because it's it's quick, and if someone is going to be framing their canvas, I don't think there's anything wrong with using that. I don't think it'll crack if it's you know, I don't know. I've never I've never tried it before, but I want to seal where the fun never ends, um, because I'm giving it to my buddy, and I don't know how like if he'll if he'll frame it ever. Um, <clears throat> if he'll ever frame it or if it'll just stay um, stay rolled up somewhere or if it'll be unrolled and rolled when he wants to show people. I don't know what his situation will be uh, with that canvas. So I kind of want to seal it just in case he is, you know, fussing with it a lot more. That way the diamonds aren't uh, at risk of popping off. So I was going to do the um, how, how Christiane does it. She uses this product called like 
Tombow something aqua glue. Um, and then she puts a little bit of that on the canvas and then uses a toothbrush to kind of brush it into the canvas. And so I, ha I ordered some. I've got two bottles of that Tombow aqua glue. So I'm gonna try that. But then I figure I'll seal another canvas, one that I already have hanging maybe. I was thinking either Self-Portrait by Tamara de Lampica, or maybe, um, I don't know. I was trying to think of maybe, maybe I would do Midnight Laundromat. Um, I'm not sure, I'm not at all concerned about drills popping on those, but I was thinking of maybe doing a video to compare the two processes. So either the Minwax or the Tombow Mono. Um, I think it's Tombow Mono off the glue. I don't know. Um, just doing a comparison between the two sealants and see which one works better for me or has a better result. Um, I, I fully trust both of both Katie and Christiane. I don't think I'm going to do like a little test swatch. I'm going to just do the entire canvas, one with one and one with the other, and see how they turn out. Um, I don't foresee there any being any major issues. So, yeah, I'm not sure. I so I've watched that, and then um, Debbie gets crafty. Had her live with um, her sister Judy, and then Robert uh, yesterday, I believe. Um, at least at the time of filming this. So I'm I'm actively watching that right now. Um, but. I wanted to pause and show everyone kind of a little bit of the view on the drive because this is one of my favorite drives, very pretty. Um, so yeah, we're just headed headed west. <laughs> so all right, well I'll let you go. I will cut back to um, doing some more kidding up, and yeah, that'll be that. All right, bye. Okie dokie. So we are getting close to the trailhead. Just wanted to kind of show you it, the road gets really narrow up here. It gets a little, a little sketchy, <laughs> but it's not too, too bad. Um, oh, whoa, whoa, sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a little dirt road and it's, uh, it's a little muddy. So I just have to be kind of careful making my way up here. Um, oh my goodness. Plenty of potholes and stuff too. So, one of the reasons why I really want a four-wheel drive car, so you can see the, the road gets a little narrow right on the little cliff side here. So, we're gonna do our best. Oh, oof da, oof da. We're gonna do our best to kind of wiggle our way through here. So sorry, so sorry, we're jumping around. I'll try to do the image stabilization on this. Um, I just kind of wanted to show everyone the... It's not super treacherous, but it's one of the reasons why I definitely want to get a, a four-wheel drive vehicle sooner than later. But it's just really pretty up here. Oh my gosh. So yeah, just kind of... It's a little bit scary. We'll see. If I can't edit this to be a little bit more smooth, I might just cut it. But um, yeah. Luckily, it's a little bit more dry on this patch. But you can imagine when there's cars coming out, leaving the opposite way, you really have to tuck yourself either like up against the side of the mountain or close to the cliff edge and it gets extra, extra scary, but so far we haven't come across anyone trying to come back our way. Fingers crossed. So that's my least favorite part. <laughs> and some people come like whipping around these blind corners like this and it's like, whoa, 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 what are you doing? So, yeah. Ugh. It's really pretty, though. Okay. Make this little cattle guard. This is gonna get my tire. Ugh. 
Oofta. Oofta. Ah, okay. Cool. We're almost there. Almost to the parking lot. Wasn't as bad as I thought it was gonna be. I thought there was gonna be like active, you know, like packed snow on the ground. In which case I probably wouldn't have been able to make it up here because it just gets too icy and slippery um, for a two wheel drive car. So this wasn't as bad as I was thinking it might be. So I'm, I'm glad because I definitely wanna show everyone this hike. And it would have been a bummer to, to uh, get all the way all the way out here and then have to either like find a alternate an alternate option or just not not go at all but i guess we could have just went into town so this is called lower cataract lake loop trail quite the mouthful um but yeah let's see if there's going to be any water coming down the waterfall just because we're at so late in the season. We shall see. Ooh, getting a little slippery, a little slidey. Not too terrible. Uh. There we go. There's the parking lot. There's a closer parking lot. Further up. Let's see if we can snag a spot up there. Can you hear the, <laughs> the mud in the snow? Woo! My car's gonna be messy. So there's probably a bunch of people who are like, you are insane, but it's Coloradoans for you. <laughs> Just go for it. Oh my goodness. Ugh. Definitely getting slippy and slidey. It's okay. It'll be worth it. Oh my gosh, there is nobody up here. There's like one car. Gorgeous. I'm excited. I can't see the waterfall. I, I don't think we're going to get any great waterfall action, but it's still fun. Ooh, I am sliding. This parking lot is usually completely full in the summer. Completely packed. This is awesome. Okay, front row seats. Oh my goodness. Yay, we're here. Okay, let me, um, let me stop. Let me get Apollo all squared away and we'll start hiking. Okay. <laughs> Hello. Okay, so we just just got started on the trail. I did see the one family that is parked. They I can't tell if they're down the trail or if they um, are going down to the lake. So essentially, you can take a straight shot into the lake or down to the lake, or you can go around the lake. And we're going around the lake, and it is super muddy. Um, but that's okay. I have my boots and Apollo's got his paws, but there's a decent amount of snow on the ground. There he is, sniffing away. Um, so we'll see, depending on how many, if I see some, if I see a lot of people, then, because there was a few more cars parked further down, but I don't think they'd park down there and then walk all the way up here. Um, I don't know. So we'll see if I see too many people. If I do, then I'm going to keep them on leash the whole time. If I don't, then um, then I'll probably let him off leash for a little while until I see people. That way he can 
kind of do his thing. So yeah, we'll probably just kind of intersperse some clips here. I'll take some pictures. Um, I don't hear the waterfall and I don't see it. So I think we're past waterfall season. Um, it's usually like, we'll see when we get there. I mean, it's, it, it's what feeds into the lake. So it's probably just not very strong. Um, but in the spring and summertime, it is super duper strong. <laughs> um, and you can hear it. You can hear like the rumbling of it all the way over here. So, but yeah, take a look around. Very pretty. This is the latest I've ever been here. As far as in the season, I've never been here when there's snow on the ground. So this is cool. <laughs> um, come on, buddy. I think I'm gonna let him off leash because he wants to stop and sniff everything. And then I have to end up essentially pulling him along. So. All right, well, we're just coming across this bridge here. Come on, Apollo, let's go. I don't know if you can hear the water. Let me stop you so I can show you this. Hold on. <laughs> so this is the little stream that kind of connects the, or comes off of the lake. This is, this is a new bridge, um, new as in like a couple years old. Before, you'd have to go down to the water and then there was just like some boards <laughs> that were laid across and then you just kind of walked across those. So this fancy bridge is new. And then they have this little, I don't know what this, why they do this little guardrail thing here, but you have to kind of zigzag your way through and hope that your dog knows not to get confused. This way. Good boy. You can see it is muddy. But all right, that's what we've got hiking boots for. So, yeah. Let's see. All right, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pause you. Um, I'm going to see what's around this corner, see if there's any people. If not, I'm going to let Apollo off. Um, but you can see we're getting close to the lake. All the aspens have lost their leaves, but it'll still be cool to walk through them. Uh, I should have done this, like a month earlier and we could have seen all the leaves changing, but that's okay. It's still really pretty. All right, let's keep going. Bye. In our way. So this area is kind of like in the summer this is like the meadowy kind of flat brush area of the hike. We're gonna have to do this again in the summer so you can see the difference um, but this is like the little flat brushy area kind of a clearing um, but we'll go through like aspen groves and an evergreen area and a bunch of wildflowers it like you like see all of the like mountain scenes all in one loop so it's a lot of fun and apollo's love in the snow which is to be expected a little husky boy um so yeah just having fun um but i guess you know as long as i don't see any people i just have to be mindful because i want to keep him on his leash um but there doesn't really seem to be anybody up here other than that one or two cars so and because the brush is so shrunken down and there's not a lot of like greenery I can kind of see ahead of us a decent way um so yeah he's loving it he's like biting the snow and <laughs> Apollo let me see if I can get him to dig <gasps> get it oh yeah get it hold on let me see if I can film this get it what is it? Apollo, get it. What's that? <laughs> get it. Get it. What's that? Get it. <laughs> get it. Get it. What's that? Right here. Get it. What's that? Get it. <laughs> oh, oh, this way. This one. <laughs> get it. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> oh man. Um, okay. So yeah. I guess the topic that I wanted to bring up 
it's a lot easier to hold the camera like this rather than in my face. So we'll, we'll do it like this. You can get Apollo view because he's, he's running the show today, apparently. Um, so yeah, here's like a little, this is usually a little creek that comes through here. So there's a little bridge. Let's go. Let's go. Um, he's not quite as white as snow, but then again, he hasn't had a bath since he got neutered. So he's, he's dirty. He needs to get clean. So he's as crisp and as white as the snow. <laughs> um, so yeah, I wanted to talk a little bit about how everyone feels like with the content creation side of things, whether you are a content creator or you're just a diamond painter that watches. Um, you know, if you've ever run into a situation where you see like a lot of the same, I don't know, I guess what I'm struggling with is um, seeing, seeing newer creators or existing creators kind of crop up that, um, you know, might be, I guess, myself included, I suppose, but struggling with, you know, finding some individuality within their content. So like, just trying to find a voice or finding a personality, I guess, around um, their content. Hi, baby. Um, and it's something that I definitely struggle with too. Um, and it's something that I, <laughs> Let's see if he'll run out here in this, like, field. Apollo, go get it. Ready? Uh, go. Go, go, go. <laughs> He's like, oh, this is too deep. Okay. Come on, buddy. Sorry. <laughs> um, you know, when I first started doing videos, I really had... Let's go. Let's go. Uh-oh, he found something. Let's go. <laughs> um, when I first started doing videos, one of the big things I did was watch others' videos to kind of see, like, how is an unboxing done and what are the key touch points and, you know, what am I supposed to be talking about here? And so I really drew a lot of influence from, um, you know, Mrs. Mrs. Coffee and Katie over at Diamonds and Washi and Rachel Ray. Like, those were kind of the big names that... I was watching when I very first started um, and trying to get my bearings because I didn't know anything about diamond painting really other than, you know, the couple kits that I had done and the videos I'd seen. So I did like analyze the breakdown of like, okay, now you talk about drill shape and canvas size and colors and special drills and all that stuff. Um, and even some of the verbiage too, like um, you know, talking about, um, rolling the canvas back because it's poured glue and all that stuff. Um, and at a certain point, you know, I started putting up a couple unboxings, but I also felt a little bit concerned because I was like, am I, am I lifting too much from these content creators? You know, am I like copying these, un this unboxing process too much to a T? And, um, you know, even now I will catch myself and I'll try to avoid saying like this exact same wording that like Katie will say, cause she'll say like when she does her poured glue, like for your diamond art club, like the canvases are very like resilient yet malleable and malleable is a word that I would also use to describe like the canvas, but I feel like I stop myself from saying it because that's how she says it. I don't want it to sound too matchy matchy. Um, so just stuff like that, that I've kind of learned, or, you know, I, I don't want to fall right now, sorry. <laughs> um, I've kind of taken away, like, for myself, um, is it, the core information is essentially the same, because it's the same essential info that people are going to need. Where is this dog going? Look at him. He's a mess. Sir? Hey, 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 let's go. Come on, he's going to fall into that lake. Let's go. Um, so I just like, I just I try to be very conscious of that, you know, when I'm creating videos. The same with like, you know, my intro just kind of developed really randomly. Like I got nervous the first couple times I like, or after a while, like after a few videos, 
I couldn't think of what to say and I just got nervous and just spouted a bunch of nonsense and now that's just what I use. <laughs> um, but for me, it would be weird if, you know, I saw like a newer content creator or like so, even anybody, not new, I mean, even existing. If I like, you know, was recommended a video and it was like, hey y'all, this is Timothy. I hope you're having a, a good day, weekday, weekend. Like if I, if I heard the same phrasing and inflections and stuff, I'd be a little weirded out. And I feel like I've been seeing that um, here and there. Um, and so I just don't know, like, it's not really a necessarily a complaint or a rant or anything like that, really. It's more of just like, I wanted to get your opinion on if, if those are things that you notice as either um, consumers of this content or content creators. Apollo, come on. Too far, too far, buddy. Come here. Look at this. Look at this mess. Look at this mess. Hi. Hi. Are you loving it? Are you a little winter puppy? Let's go. He's, he's jazzed right now. Um, so yeah, I just, I wanted to kind of get your, your thoughts on it. Cause I have seen, you know, I've watched it. Some videos will come up, you know, how they auto play, right? Like they just roll one right into the other. And sometimes that's how I discover new content creators. If he gets in this water, he's in, Hey, oh my goodness. He will be freezing and I don't want him getting wet, too wet. We're, we're eight days out of the 10 days that they said to wait. So I'm not like terribly concerned, but hey, what are you doing? Let's go, let's go. Come on, come on, come on, snow dog. Um, so yeah, I'm not too concerned about, about it at this point. Um, but yeah, you know how it'll kind of like play into the next video. Well, I was at work the other day and one came on, a video came on from what appears to be like a newish content creator, a new diamond painter, at least for making videos. And um, the phrasing and the exact wording was, you know, word for word, you know, um, like tone for tone, the same as somebody else I watched. And it kind of like threw me off because you know, you watch enough of someone's videos with the same intro and you know that person's voice, you know what you're getting into, you know who you're listening to. And I was like, wait, that's not this person. What? And it like, it almost made me feel like I was in like some sort of alternate dimension. <laughs> He's, oh, I'm so glad I brought him up here. I'm so glad I did this. Um, it was just very strange and it like, I don't know. So I'm like, am I the only one that um, catches that sometimes um, or would feel that way? Um, so I just kind of wanted to pick your brain and, you know, it's not not trying to, you know, say anyone specifically or anything like that. Because like I said, I struggled with and I still continue to struggle with finding ways to make my content more unique and individualistic and interesting. And it's something I think about pretty consistently. And I would hope that, um, you know, other content creators, you know, when they're starting out, maybe take that approach and like kind of take a step back and say, okay, what is it about me that, you know, my friends really enjoy, my family really enjoys? How can I highlight those particular things? And sure, everyone's gonna have certain things that are similar, but I just worry that, um, the might, mindset might occasionally be, look at how beautiful this lake is. Um, you know, some people may have the mindset of like, okay, I'm just going to like wholesale copy and paste this person's style because they're very popular or have a lot of subscribers or get free kits or I don't know. I don't know what the motivation is there, but, um, oh my God, he's ridiculous. Um... Hey, buddy, come here. <laughs> well, I guess he likes the snow. <laughs> He's having the time of his life. Um, so yeah, I don't know what the motivation is there. And it could be well-intentioned where people just don't think of it that way. You know, you see somebody that's really successful or 
that's even a weird word to use, but like maybe has a lot of notoriety or popularity in the community. And it might seem like the natural thing to be like, I can just, you know, I'll do, I'll do this as well. And, you know, hopefully that jump starts my channel or what have you. Um, but I think there is, I think, and let me know what you think. There's a fine line between like, um, getting inspired by or being influenced by to do your own thing and just like straight up like okay I'm gonna write down what the, this person says in their intro or what this person says here or I'm gonna take a look at their styling and I'm gonna try to mimic it as close as possible I don't know and I always approach all these situations with like people don't have like ill intent you know and they're not necessarily being like malicious about it i mean it's diamond painting <laughs> um but i feel bad for or you know yeah i do i i feel bad for content creators that might take that approach and think that that's the path towards like you know getting their name out there and and gaining subscribers or what have you um but from the outside, from the viewer's perspective, it can look a little sus, you know? And I just worry that it's actually working against that person, you know, that content creator's best interests. Um, because now I'm less inclined to watch their videos because I'm like, oh, I don't know. It feels weird, you know? <laughs> um, so, and I want to support as many people as possible but then as, at the same time it's like who am I to you know am is it appropriate for me to tap someone on the shoulder who I've never talked to before and say hey you know I'm not sure if you were aware but this is word for word beat beat for beat the exact same stylings of this other person and not that you need to change anything necessarily but this is how it came off to me and I'm sure that's not your intention, but you know, just be mindful. And I think one of the big things to do when you start a channel, not to say that you need to go and research every diamond painter and make sure you're not doing the same stuff, but I don't know. There is, there is a certain amount of research that I did um, to make sure that A, I wasn't just you know, lifting stuff from other people, but also not even that. That's not what my intention was. My intention was to do research and see what others were doing to make sure I'm covering the basics, but the entire time thinking about how do I make this me, you know? And so unboxings are kind of hard to do because that's all just kind of the same information. Um, I guess one thing that I do slightly differently is... Um, rather than just like calling out the ABs and then pointing to where they'll go, I actually will cut them out of their strands and lay them down near where, where the biggest majority of them is in the kit. So that's something I don't see every time. Um, other things that I do is try to work through which enha what enhancements I'll, I'll, um, or ideas for enhancements that I have right out the gate. Like this is glaring that I'm in it, you know, this is no doubt about it putting the crystal here or this is going to get some quad cubes i can already see that so i try to do stuff like that too in my unboxings but even then you know outside of that like even whip and chats like doing your intros and stuff or um i don't know there's so many things we <laughs> being so he is like he's just in it i think he found his element <laughs> <laughs> he was down like almost kind of kneeling um, on his front legs getting really into the snow wow I've never seen him do that well then again I've never had him in snow like this so um so yeah I, uh, um yeah but even for like whipping chats I try to I try to just do more of like a rambling style and I have tried to write down structure before but I go on so many tangents that I'm like and I, I just don't it's not something that comes to mind like I don't something doesn't happen during the week and I'm like ooh, write this down for your whip and chat like it just kind of 
comes to me organically, I suppose. So I feel like mine are a lot less structured and I'm so thankful that people are able to like follow along and watch that because sometimes I'm like, wow, that was a whole lot of nothing. <laughs> um, but I'm glad people enjoy it. Um, and then the one big thing that I, or two big things that I decided pretty early, early on, or I, I, I guess I did like a revamp of my channel in like July um, and I had started it in May. Um, or April 25th was my first video. So I kind of did a revamp to, because I was really thinking about, like, how do I add some content that just isn't out there at all, you know? And the first piece was doing exactly what we're doing now and having these conversations while I enjoy some of the other activities that I really love and almost kind of, like, sometimes, like, especially in my vlogs, like, the diamond painting is in the conversation, but it's almost second seat because it's in like the time lapse portions and stuff. And what we're doing is like hiking and enjoying, you know, running errands or time with friends, that type of thing, or time with Apollo. So um, that was kind of the first decision was like, I want, I would want to, this to be a lot more than just the camera facing down on my hands on at the crafting table. Like we're gonna do more than that. Um, and as I continue to like incorporate more activities and more hobbies and stuff, who knows, this channel might completely change to like just general life stuff, including diamond painting, maybe third, fourth, fifth on the list. Um, and I hope everyone's, you know, enjoying coming along. Um, I figure as long as I do the chats, people can sit down and craft and stuff along with me. Cause a lot of times it's just the spoken word of it all rather than like what's happening on the screen. Let's go buddy. Um, so yeah, I would encourage, you know, content creators to, you know, think about if there is space in their lives and in their schedule to mix it up a little bit and think about what life looks like for you away from crafting and if you can create ties between the two and share that with us because I really enjoy doing these and I love when people do stuff like, not necessarily like this, but just like... The car vlogs are some of my favorite videos and a lot of that stuff. So just something to think about. Um, and then the other thing that I decided that I wanted to do was incorporate more of, you know, the artwork in the sense of like, oh my gosh, I don't want to fall. Look at where I'm at right now. Um, eh, eh, okay. I'm just worried that the mud's going to make my shoes slippery. Um, incorporating kind of like learning more about the artwork itself and some of the history and backstory and creating like a whole mini series, which was, whoa, <laughs> whoa, sorry, <laughs> what I was able to do with Composition Mon uh, Monumental. And a lot of that was inspired by how much I just fell in love with the, the Summer with the Masters event and just how much I really enjoyed working on Soul of the Rose. And it just sparked an interest in art for me that I've never had before. And um, Jessica over at Tiny Worlds of Wonder, her videos um, where she would show like old masters from around the globe or like highlight different styles of artwork. I was very much inspired by, um, by those videos. And in wanting to do these series specific to one kit. So it's almost kind of like taking that, but um, making it a little bit more granular and focusing on one particular kit or diamond painting or artist. Hi buddy, let's go. Um, so that's kind of how that was fleshed out. And then once again, my goal was to say, okay, t we can do that, but let's step away from the crafting table and let's go to a museum, let's let's prepare a meal. So that's kind of where that went. So, and all of that was just stem, stemmed from making sure that I'm always reflecting on my content, reflecting on what I'm seeing from others and how I can evolve and change in a way that I think will be engaging. Um, and I just, oop, he's looking at something. I just wanna make sure we have no people around. Let me make sure I've got his. Let me make sure I've got his leash. Even if it's like a squirrel or, I mean, who knows? It could be a deer out here. I just want to make sure that I'm not 
caught off guard without his leash. Okay, got it. Eh. Okay. But you can see he's pretty good about, like, I stopped and he stopped. Hey, Apollo. I say that and he's gone. Hey, come here, buddy. Hey, Apollo. <laughs> You're a maniac, dude. You better sleep in the car on the way down all the way. I mean, he did all the way up here, but he better. Now he has no excuse because he is getting his exercise. Oh my goodness, I do not want to fall. It is icy. So it like melt, you know, how the snow will melt when it's compacted and then freeze again. That's what we're dealing with. Let's go. Um, so yeah, that, that's just kind of my thoughts on it. I've just been... You know, just seeing and hearing some stuff that I was like, huh, I wonder if, I don't know, I wonder how other people feel about this. And it's just, you know, like I said, this not meant to be any sort of complaint. It's just kind of an observation, I guess. Um, we're getting into the Christmassy part. We were in the meadowy part and now we're in the thick snow covered evergreens or pine trees. Um, oop, I do hear some sort of animal or person. Apollo, come here, baby. Come here. Come here. Good boy. Thank you. Let me clip you. Stay. Good boy. Eh. Eh. Stay. Yeah, I hear something. Sorry. Okay. Um, let's get through this part. I might take some more photos through this area. I just want to make sure we're not coming up on people or animals. It's really pretty, though. It's so quiet. I love... I love that the snow is kind of like a sound dampening <laughs> and it just makes it like so peaceful. Oh, I love it. Apollo, do you like it? We'll get over this hill and we'll see if we can get him to, if there's people up here. Hold on, we'll, we'll continue this conversation. One second. <laughs> people. I haven't seen them. I think it was the ducks. It was a huge flock of ducks. You can see the lake starting to freeze down here. Um, not a huge flock, but about like 10, 15 ducks that were all hanging out. And there's like little paths that you can kind of stumble your way down to the lake. Um, like right here is one you could kind of slip your way down to. And Apollo ran down there and scared them all. And then he almost almost launched into the lake, but he thought better of it. I was like, Apollo, you can't get your little coin purse wet. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, so yeah, I think that's all I wanted to, to say on that. I just wanted to hear your, your thoughts. You can see the ducks. Let's see if we can zoom in. There they are sitting out there on the ice. Um, let's see. There's, there's my duck. Um, yeah, I just wanted to, you know, encourage people to leave comments, let me know your thoughts. And if you are someone that recently started, you know, if you have any like fun ideas or need help figuring out ideas, I'd love to have a little brainstorm session with anyone that's like trying to figure out what I can do on my channel. I, I'd love to pick, pick your brain and help you come up with stuff. I, I love doing things like that. So. Um, yeah. So, another little frozen part of the lake. This is really icy over here. Um, I hear the waterfall. It's not nearly as loud as it normally is, but I'm going to pause it again. Um, and when we get to the waterfall area, I'll either snap some photos or do a little clip. But we're just enjoying our time out here. It's, it's in the 40s. It's definitely cold, but I didn't even have to wear my gloves because the sun is out and there's minimal cloud cover that we're just having fun in our little winter wonderland. Let's go. Let's go. Um, so yeah, he's, he's freaking loving it. He is sniffing all the things and 
I can tell that he's um, getting some good exercise. So I'm getting some good exercise, trying not to fall. Um, so right here, I don't know. Yeah, this is the spot. There used to be a log that connected from this end and you could basically catwalk and balance basically over to where Apollo is right now. But it looks like they got rid of it. So, which is kind of good because that thing scared me. <laughs> Every time, or last time I came up here, when Apollo was just a pup, he tried getting on it, and then our buddy's husky maverick would always walk on it. And I'm like, whoa, 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 chill out. Just don't want anyone falling and breaking a little leg. So, all right, we're going to keep going, and I'll see you when we get to the waterfall. Bye. Hello. Come on. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You want another one? I'm throwing these snowballs. Uh -uh. Ready? Ready? Go! He didn't see it. Apollo, look. Go! <laughs> He's like a little bunny. <laughs> Get it! Come on. Come on. Let's go. <laughs> Good boy. Good boy. Alright, we are to the waterfall. It's, you can't really see the waterfall itself. It's just kind of the the river post waterfall. <laughs> it's not too far up there. I could kind of bushwhack my way up there if it wasn't covered in snow, but I don't I don't want to slip and fall in the the icy deep. <laughs> but we will come down here. Come on, baby. So this is the bridge we're gonna cross, but we're gonna come down next to it. Isn't this cool? It's like a little Chuck Pinson. We just need um, a whole bunch of cabins and deer and ducks and stuff. <laughs> He's, you're gonna fall in. That ice? All right, all right, bro. It's on you. You're the one that's gonna have frozen paws. Come on. Let's let's not do that. Let's not do that. Okay, let's let's get up here. Yeah. Can you see why this is my favorite hike? <laughs> it's so pretty. I think we might stop here for a second and get some water and just kind of take it all in. I love how the snow is like, it's doing these weird. Oh, 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 oh. He is, <laughs> he just tried to jump off. Hey, 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 you can't go down there. Oh my God. <laughs> let's go, let's go. This is. Sorry. <laughs> he just tried to like crawl off the, it's a pile of snow, so it looks like it's solid, but I think it just goes right down to the river. He just tried to jump onto it or into it. He is an absolute snow dog. I can't wait till there's like a ton of snow on the ground. Okay. Whoa, whoa. Jeez. Before the end of this video, if I can make it through this while remaining upright, then we've succeeded. Because <laughs> it is icy and snowy. Okay. This is a little rock that sometimes I, in the summer, I'll climb up on top of for an excellent photo. Let's see if I can get the boy up there. Let's see how agile you are. Hop up, hop up. Ooh, nice, dude. <laughs> Holy crap, look at, that was a big, that was a big jump. Good boy. <laughs> oh my god, you've got some spring in your step, sir. <laughs> oh my goodness, that was crazy. Oh, this is another little area. This is just, it's so pretty, it's so beautiful. And it's like the perfect day to do a snowy hike because it's it's warm enough, you know? He is like, he's living it up. Be careful, this way. The little, the little rapids, it's just, it's very peaceful. <sighs> I love it, I love it. All right, let's keep going.
this is the area that is usually full of these like weird, they're like kind of palmy looking, like it's grass, but it's like thick. It's like these thick, um, tall grasses that almost have like a tropical look to them, oddly. Um, and they just are like about chest high for me, maybe a little bit taller. And they have kind of like a really earthy smell to them. I have no idea what they are, but obviously they've all kind of died in the, the frosts. But this is another area. I cannot wait for you to see what this looks like in the spring and summer because it's completely different. So I'll have to call back to this video next year because I'm going to be walking this same path and you'll see just how drastically different it looks. This is all just like green grasses with aspen trees and then up on this hill you'll have wild sunflowers that'll grow and it's just absolutely gorgeous. I mean this, I still think this is stunning too. This is a lot of fun. It's actually a little bit, it's still muddy, but during the spring when the snow is fully melted and then those kind of like grasses come up, this kind of turns into a bog. And so you have to like really watch your step. But I've never been able to see the lake over these brushes before because they're usually all full of foliage. Look at him. That's ridiculous. He is ridiculous. He tried to run to the lake. He saw more ducks and run out onto the ice and I was like, no, 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 no. I am not about to have to jump in there and rescue you. <laughs> so you can kind of see the stalks from whatever those plants are. Look at him. Oh my goodness. Are you loving this? Is this the best day ever? <laughs> Let's go. This might be the most fun he's had on a hike yet. <laughs> he's just eating grass and jumping around. Look at how beautiful, I mean, come on. With the little puppy, the puppy. Oh my goodness, Apollo, hey, let's go. Come on, come on. I mean, what are we doing? This is, this is what I want in life every day. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I'm so glad that I got to bring you guys on this. This is, this is gorgeous. I can't, I forgot how much I love it up here. Yeah, now I've got a little friend to come with me on these travels. Well, I guess a whole bunch of friends. You're all here. Um, so yeah. Um, so this is usually all green and then you get to this aspen grove and it just completely changes scenery again. It starts to get really like kind of more tropically, like there's a lot of like fern kind of plants and kind of low-laying plants in that area. So it's just once again a completely different vibe. So it's just a little bit more humid under those trees too, so it just like, it's almost like the climate kind of adjusts. Hey, Apollo, let's go. When behind us we were looking at all the evergreen. So we were hiking along this whole ridge. We came up behind those trees and out here. And we started from basically that point. So we've walked this entire ridge. And now we're about to walk the whole other side. The parking lot's at the very tip over there. So yeah, let's keep going. Um, there's also an upper cataract lake trail and it basically follows this ridge line all the way up and it ends up there. So yeah, but I don't have it in me to do that one today. <laughs> And last time I went up there a couple of years ago, um, there was a certain part that was completely washed out. So you had to turn back early and it's like pretty strenuous. And the payoff is supposed to be at the top because you go to where the, the waterfall starts um, up there. And that's kind of the big payoff, but they had it closed. And it was like, you mean to tell me? I huffed and I puffed and I, I hauled all of this flab all the way up here and I don't even get to see the, the whole thing, like the thing that we're supposed to see. And then it started raining and I was just like, okay, that's it. <laughs> um, oh, another, another story, um, actually walking through this exact field, um, a thunderstorm rolled in when I brought my brothers up here to hike. This was years ago. So they were 
just little boys. Um, one was probably six or eight, and the other one was 13, 14. And it started, um, thunder started rolling in and the lightning started to strike up on the top of the mountain. And they, we were all freaked out. I was like, let's get the heck out of here. And I just remember them being like, we don't like hiking. <laughs> it's like, yeah, well, I guess I could see after this experience why you wouldn't, but I hope you continue to do it. <laughs> so I kind of picked the worst day and they both had their uh, sweaters and coats over their heads to keep the rain from getting on them. Because um, growing up, like, my mom and my stepdad are, were not very outdoorsy people. Um, we would do camping maybe a couple of times a year maybe but most of the time their idea of going up to the mountains was like renting a condo or a cabin and walking downtown of some of these like mountain towns and like window shopping and antiquing like that's what they wanted to do so it wasn't until I like became an adult and started hanging out with like adult friends that liked the outdoors that I started really getting into hiking um, and this was one of the first trails I remember being very memorable um, this is the one I mentioned last week that I got really scared because there's a suit, there's some drop off. Um, so we're going to be coming up to that area soon. And I've never been on it with snow, so we'll see how it goes. But I'm going to let you go for this clip. Um, it gets a little bit more narrow, as you can see, and it starts to get a little bit more twisty churny. And with the mud and the snow, I don't want to, um, once again, fall down. <laughs> Not once again, but I'm just saying I don't want to fall down today. <laughs> and the mud is making it extra gloopy and slippery. Look at this. I mean, with the ducks down there. And... Come on. Come on. I cannot wait to show this to you in the summer. I can't wait. Okay, let's keep going. Bye. Holy Toledo. It's beautiful. <laughs> Sorry, I keep stopping. But yeah. Uh, there it is. Look at him. He's like, why aren't we moving? But yeah, like this used to freak me out. Like a trail like this that just kind of goes straight down into the water. It still kind of gets me because it's snowy and muddy, but I just have to make sure that I trust. Like, that's the one thing I've learned with hiking for the past, you know, decade, I guess, is invest in good footwear and trust your footwear and trust your your placement. Apollo, come here. Too far. Stay. Um, you can make sure you have good footwear that's got good traction. It's not worn, worn down completely. You want to replace it every couple seasons or just look at the tread. And trust your footing. Um, I think one, the couple times that I have taken a pretty significant spill is when I go to take that next step and I hesitate, but my body, that momentum is still going. So you're kind of doing that like, whoa, on your tippy toes. And then your weight shifts to the front of your foot and you slip or you stumble forward because you weren't feeling very sure-footed, so I ha especially had to learn that when climbing and doing approaches is like, you kind of have to just take the step. <laughs> and once you plant that foot, give it a little pressure, make sure that you've got a good grip on you, and then take that next step. Just caution, but you know, that, that like, whoa, hesitation that momentum and that kind of jerking motion can really put you down. Let's go. He's just eating all the things and licking all the things. Dude, like this here. This, this is still kind of scary. Okay, enough. This isn't a salad bar. Let's go. Um, let's see. I don't know how close we're getting to our little ledge here, but I might put him back on the leash for when we get to it, because he's a lot braver than I am. 
and I worry that it might be to a fault. <laughs> um, but yeah, like this just kind of goes straight down into the water here. Um, I think we're getting to the ledge. I'll keep you, I'll keep, I'll stay with you till we get up there. Cause we're probably gonna take another break. Come here, come here. Come here, baby. Good boy, thank you, thank you. Stay. He's so muddy, but I love it. That just means he had a good time. Let's go. Let's go. When I first got him, I was like, oh, I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna wash him, you know, at least once a week and keep his coat like brilliantly white. I even have like specialty, like blonde shampoo for him, you know, that's like kind of tinted um, <laughs> and all, all kinds of stuff. He even has dog cologne. Um, <laughs> uh, but once we started doing outdoorsy stuff and the fact that our backyard is dirt, I had to give that up pretty quickly. And now I, wa I try to wash him once every, every week, every other week, just depending on how dirty he's gotten. But um, the past, eight days have been rough because I can't, I can't wash him until Tuesday. And there's been a couple days where it's rained and a little bit of snow flurry down in Denver. And so, where are you going? Where are you going? This way. So when I, uh, when I let him out to go potty, he gets muddy. So I've just been wiping his paws with a towel. Um, but his coat has gotten like kind of dingy. But you know what? He he's an active pup and he clearly loves this stuff. So it's just like I'm not gonna be able to keep him completely clean all the time. And in fact, him being dirty maybe is a is a sign that he's enjoying his life. <laughs> um and he he doesn't hate the dog wash, but it's not his favorite thing in the world. <laughs> he definitely like, especially when I'm doing the blow dryer, he wants to get out of there. I think it's a combination of the noise and just like the strange setting. So here we are. As you can see, we're a lot higher. So when we were talking about my brothers and stuff, we were down in that clearing down there. And then back in those trees, oops, back in those trees is that's where the waterfall spits out. There's the ducks that we were seeing. Let's see if I can zoom in. Uh, you can't really see them, but yeah, so we're, we're making good progress. We're hauling butt. At one point we were walking all along around there. So we're definitely higher up than we were. Um, here's the kind of drop off down to the lake. Oh boy, this is a workout. I think this, is, I think I said it before, but it's like, two and a half three miles round trip and during the summer when I'm really a little chipmunk um, <laughs> Apollo, Apollo. Um, um, when I'm trying to come up here to get some exercise done um, so this is it um, then I'll do this lap twice and do like five miles okay so like this right here see how it's just like a slippery rock field down to the water this used to freak me out. Come on. Um, so yeah, the fact that I can just do this, A, with a dog attached to me, I would never let that happen <laughs> before. And B, holding a camera is crazy. So like right here, I was pressing my butt up against these rocks, kind of like sitting and sliding because I was so scared of falling down this hill. There's another part up here that's also pretty freaky. Come on. So yeah, like right here is kind of the worst of it because it really gets narrow. So see how it's just like, you take a tumble into the water pretty good. <laughs> oh, the rocks might stop you. You might catch a femur on one of those rocks. So see how it gets like really narrow and it's just, Right down you go. 
um, this little area up here too. But it is beautiful. Let's go. You don't need to go down there. Come on. Come on. So yeah, like right here is like, where do you even step? <sighs> and then it's just like, but yeah. It's cool though, it's very beautiful. So this is, I'd say three quarters of the way through the hike. Um, the rest of the way is kind of going back down. I see the gates here kind of mark the, the end of the formal hike. The rest of the way going down is just kind of cutting through some aspen groves, some more evergreen trees, and it's kind of a leisurely stroll. We're just gonna wind our way down to the parking lot now. Um, but yeah, this is it. Oh my goodness, that was a workout. Sorry, I'm gonna have to start calling these vlogs heavy breathing. <laughs> um, yeah, but very beautiful. And in the summer, the waterfall is basically like straight in the middle of what you're looking at. And it's flowing hard enough that you can see it from here. I can kind of see the water coming down at the top, but it's nowhere what it looks like during the summer. So, yeah. What do you think, buddy? Let me let you off leash. We haven't seen a single soul this whole time other than right at the parking lot. Come here. Come here. This way. You're all tangled up. Come here. Untangle him. Eh, look at him. You're a mess, sir. Okay. All right. Um... Well, I guess if I see anything else cool or get another cool view of anything, I'll pop you back on or take a picture. Otherwise, we'll um, say our goodbyes in the car, I suppose. Um, unless there's anything else I can think of. But this vlog was really just come with us on a Sunday hike and watch me die or watch me kid up cozy evening. So double, double. Um, feature as far as wintry stuff. You got the, the snow in real life and the snow um, in DMC. <laughs> um, but yeah, let me know. Uh, actually, we'll say, we'll say our goodbyes in the car. Um, I'm, we're going to keep going here and um, I'll see you when we get down there. Okay. Say bye, Apollo. Apollo. He says bye. <laughs> okay. Hello. Okay. This hoodie is a mess. Ah. It's kind of hot. I don't think I need it. Um, but we just got back in the car. Apollo made the whole back seat a muddy mess. That's okay. I just made the whole um, carpet up here <laughs> a muddy mess. So we're both doing the best that we can. Um, but yeah, that's it. That was the hike. Um, cataract, Lower Cataract Lake Trail. Um, that was a blast. That was a couple hours of hiking that we did in total. And so, um, I just wanted to say some goodbyes. Oh, there was something I was thinking of as I was hiking. I was like, don't forget to mention. Oh, um, so this week I will most likely be able to finally, um, I feel like it's been a while, sit down and do a, like an actual regular whip and chat where we talk life stuff and diamond painting stuff. I love doing these vlogs and I feel like we get a lot of the same information, but I feel like I've been a little bit vlog heavy for the past month um, and just haven't really sat down and done a whip and chat. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that a lot of that energy went into um, Composition Monumental where we did uh, kitten chat and the vlog and chat and just prepping for that. And, and also regular work's been busy and stuff too. So I feel like I've been sitting down and not having just like a ton to chat about necessarily. Um, but last week, um, as you're watching this, last week when I did all this stuff for Composition Monumental, um, ooh, it's slippery. Um, 
I've had that I had that whole week off. So um, I'm hoping because I'm filming this before <laughs> before that, but I'm hoping having that week off of filming real in like live in real time. Woo, that was a big splash. Um, let me roll these up. That whole week, uh, this whole past week, I'll have some um, some topics to discuss, some updates on things, um, all that good stuff. So, and I'd like to do maybe a whole whip and chat just to talk about my time uh, working on Composición Monumental and how it was putting together that that week long series. I think that might be some fun content for maybe new creators of like how to space that out and plan that out. Maybe I'm not sure. Um, or just fun for anyone to listen along to. Um, duh. So I think that's how that's going to go, it, is I'll have the whole week to kind of build up all my my chatting topics. And then, um, and then later this week, um, so I'm not sure if this will come out on like this coming Friday or Saturday, but I'll try to do another whip and chat with one of my current whips. Um, Ideally, by the time that you're seeing this, I'll be done with Where the Fun Never Ends. So um, maybe it'll be, um, I really want to get to Senorita by Henry Clive and Jaded Gem Shop. I've had that kit for a while and I've, I'm about three sections into it. I've done three sections just kind of on the side and, um, and I should probably finish this when we get down because it's, I want to pay attention to the road since it's slick. Okay, I'm gonna stop yammering. Let me get down to the paved road and then we'll we'll wrap this up. Hold on. Okay, back on dry land. <laughs> um, so I was talking about whips and kind of like what I want to start when, when the fun never ends is all done. Um, and hopefully it is done by the time you see this. I just, I don't know. I really want to get to Senorita like I was saying, I've done a, a, like three or four sections of Senorita, um, and I got a big size. I think it's like 80 by 100. I don't know. It's a big boy. Um, or 70 by 100. And it's gorgeous so far, um, but it's a very taxing canvas. Not in like a bad way. It's just incredibly confetti heavy. And it's churning out to make the detail amazing. Like I just got to... Um, she's holding a fan and I'm like got the bottom of the fan and the detail is just amazing. But I tend to want to intermix confetti, heavy confetti sections with color blocking sections. I like to keep things uh, going. So, and that, that canvas is, or that kit is all confetti. So I feel like I could see myself getting burnt out working on that only. Um, but on the flip side, the way that I've set up my Instagram and my YouTube channel is I have whips going on in the background that I don't really talk about. Oh, I'll talk about them, but I don't show them until they're time until it's time for them to come in the forefront. So I'll be working them on them in the background. And then on Instagram, I'll be like, here's my next one that I'm starting on, or here's my next, uh, project but it's already got like a few sections done on it because I've just been kind of fussing with it here and there. And the same with YouTube, I'll usually, when I do a whip and chat, I'm already a portion of way, the way into the kit. I've already done a kit and chat. So I like, I like the continuity from like a, like a storytelling standpoint is um, when you see the kit and chat, it um, most likely you're gonna see a whip and chat or a vlog about it and then a finish like I try not to do whip and chats where I'm alternating between multiple canvases or anything like that just to keep the storyline there and the same with Instagram like once I put on my Instagram starting a new project that's the only one you're going to see until it's done but I could see that becoming a problem with kids like Senorita where this might be something that I'm working on for months and months, and I don't necessarily know if that's the only thing I want people to see for that extended amount of time. And doing a whip and chat with the same kit over and over and over again that long. Like one thing that I do kind of like, or I, I sh not necessarily strive for, but it is kind of a little bit of, you know, goal setting is to, um, to work through the kits relatively quickly, you know? So we're not sitting with the same kit for a ton of time. 
So I think I might have to change my structure there and let me know your thoughts where I might bring out Senorita once in a while or maybe just call it like, I might have like a fun title for the videos that I'll be featuring that kit, but then still do my other, you know, my whatever project and kind of do them in tandem because like I've got Star Maker that I want to get to that already has a couple sections done on it. I have that Del Sol has one section done on it. Um, oh, the other kit, I, I forgot. I have a Craftably kit open right now, Crimson Oracle. I have a section done on that too. Um, so there's all these kits that I kind of kit up because I have the storage space for them. And I'll do like one section on them just to call it started. And then I'll pull, I'll snag one of them when I'm in the mood, but I always have like my main whip going that I spend the majority of the time on. So right now it's one where the fun never ends. So I just don't know if I can do that with Senorita because that each of those sections, you know, in a, in a weekend diamond painting session where I, maybe I've got three hours or four hours to diamond paint kind of scattered throughout the day, I can get a good three sections of where the fun never ends done if I, you know, if I put my mind to it, two or three sections. I can't even get a single section of Senorita done in that same amount of time. Like there was, when I did one section all in one night, I was in front of that thing for a few hours just on that one section because it's just a, it's a ton of confetti and it keeps me very engaged and I like it. But when I'm done, I'm just like, oh, okay, all right. <laughs> and um, yeah, I have to get in the zone. So it's not where I can like, crank through a section real quick in one night and then snag Star Maker and do a little work on it. Like I'd have to like spend a whole, you know, day or weekend working on Senorita, let my brain reset, kind of take a breather. And in that time, do something that is more color blocking like Star Maker and just, just go. Because I like that, that sense of accomplishment in getting like a section done or multiple sections done. So you might see some changes here when it comes to that. I might be alternating between multiple kits um, as opposed to, you know, start start one and end one kind of scenario. Um, I know I've done a lot of, um, and that's I think that's another reason why I've kind of avoided doing kitten, kitten chats is because I have a lot of kits going all at once. And so I don't want it to be kitten chat, kitten chat, kitten chat. And it's like, wait, Anthony, are you like, are you working on any of these? Are you just kidding up everything and that's it? So that's why I've been kind of not really doing those so much and really leaning heavily on the blogs, but I'm gonna get back to them. Um, I just wanna kind of finish what I have on my plate. You'll see the kidding up um, in time-lapse of Cozy Evening. And that'll put me back to, I guess, um, at the time of that you're seeing this, if Where the Fun Never Ends goes away, I'll have Cozy Evening, Crimson Oracle, Star Maker, Del Sol, and Senorita. So I'll have five whips going. I have enough storage space to like do probably at once Cozy Evenings kitted up, probably two or three more. So I could have up to eight, <laughs> eight whips going at any given time. But I don't want to do that to myself. And then I change my mind. I'm like, Nope, you want, um, this just came in, so you're gonna start on that and I don't have the storage space to kit it up. So I like having a few or a couple empty storage containers ready to rock and roll. That way, if something does, like an, like if an Ivy Dolomore came out and I'm like, that's it, put everything else aside, we're doing that. I don't want to have to buy even more storage to make that happen. Um, the other weird thing I've been doing is so I've used art dot. I've, I've put a ring on the art dot containers. I like screwing and unscrewing them. I don't know why, but I, I've been toying with the idea of going with Elizabeth Ward, but every time I see someone click that thing up or have to snap it up, I'm like, oh, my nail. So <laughs> I, I like the screw caps. I don't think I'm gonna switch out of those. And I've got so many now and I like everything to match. So um I've been getting, I have the 120 container sets of the art dots. So when I first start a canvas, most likely, unless it's a really small kit, I have to use one of those um, 120. I don't fill all 120 up. Maybe I'll fill only 60 or 70, but I start with that. And then as I'm working down the kit or working on the kit um, and working it up, then 
I slowly empty those containers, right? The amount of drills I have left to use shrinks. So it shrinks to a point where I only need a 60 container. So now I have, I don't have enough yet, but I've been purchasing the 60 container ones. So I can kit, I can move those into a smaller art dot and then have my 120 free again for the next kitting up. So it's like consolidate, move to a smaller one, free up the bigger one. So eventually I'll have equal amounts of both. That way I can always do that. But what that means is I'm giving myself more room to put new kits in the bigger ones. So it's just like, it's just a vicious cycle. Kitting up is a lot of fun. And I kind of like having a selection of kits to pick from that are ready to go. Because sometimes like I'll finish, I'll just get done with a few colors of where the fun never ends. And I'm like, I'm done with this today. I'm sick of touching all these ABs and they're just messing up my pink wax and they're messing up my glue dots and I'm just I'm just frustrated with the, this section of ABs or I'll finish a big section of ABs and I'm like I just need a break from this kit like I'm just done working on it for whatever reason um, and it's a big kit I feel like I'm getting towards the end and I'm like starting to slow down on progress because I'm just like oh god I really have been working on this one you know <laughs> So I find myself reaching for Star Maker or Senorita, and it's nice to have those options in different color palettes, different drill shapes, different, um, you know, subject matters. So I like having that variety. And um, yeah, so I don't mind having a lot of kits kitted up. It's just that, like I said, if something comes across the Diamond Art Club site or Jaded Gem Shop or something like that, where it's like, I have to, as soon as that arrives at my door it's I'm working I'm just gonna start working on it I like having that flexibility and get my storage containers to do that so we'll see there might come a day where it's like all right well I've got 47 kits in my stash and I've got 47 kitted up so let's go <laughs> I hope not because then if I go to D stash I'm kind of like out of luck there so anyway um we're back on the highway. I'm I'm hungry again from breakfast. We're it's afternoon now. It's coming up on three o'clock. So I am gonna stop in town and get something to eat. I've got Apollo with me, so I can't. I, I'm not gonna go in and sit down. However, there is a um, there is a restaurant up here called Red Red Mountain or something like that. I forget what it's called, but. Um, Red Creek? I don't know. And anyway, they have the most delicious French onion soup. They got rid of it. They scaled down their menu during um, the um, during the panini, as Rachel Lorraine would call it. During the panini, um, they scaled down their menu, and that's one of the things that they got rid of. But since everything's picked back up again, it's back on the menu. And I've only had it once since they expanded their menu again and it is the perfect fall autumn you know 46 degrees out the perfect bubbly cheese delicious french onion soup and it comes in like a crock it's so good but i don't i don't think i feel like leaving apollo in here by himself so it might be a drive through situation or something i can order for pickup once i get into town or just run in and do counter service and leave but yeah, there's that place. And then there is a um, Chinese buffet in town. And you'd think that a Chinese buffet in the middle of the mountains would not be where it's at, but it's where it's at. It is so good. Everything's really fresh. They constantly change out the food, but it is packed in there and it's tight quarters. And I don't, the one thing I don't like about it when it's busy is when you're eating solo, like last time I was there, it was on a hike and I went in there by myself. Um, they sit you at like a booth with other people, like the bench seating. So it was like me sitting with no one across from me, but then next to me was a family with kids and they were like knocking stuff around, like little toddlers, like knock, knocking their sippy cups. And I'm like, I just got apple juice all over my arm. And I just, I don't mind kids in a restaurant by any means. And I sympathize with parents, like when their kids um, have tantrums and stuff like that really doesn't bother me because they're human beings and they're trying to tell their parents something that they don't have the like they can't vocalize it you know so I'm like you know what that's 
that's just part of life. And I'm, I, well, I agreed to be at this restaurant too, so I can't fuss, but putting me, you know, sitting directly next to me. Now that's a little, you know, give, at least put me at a table that doesn't have the, the kids, you know, like, yeah. So anyway, but once again, I'd have to leave Apollo in the car to get that delicious wonton soup. So I don't know what I'm going to do. And then am I like hungry enough to want to eat in the mountains or should I wait till I get back to the house and just make something? I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. But yeah, let me know, I guess, in the comments, what your thoughts are on our, what we talked about when we were walking, um, or hiking about, you know, originality and content, just seeing a lot of the same stuff not bother you? What are you looking for, you know, when you're watching these videos? Or is it just something to, you know, keep your mind occupied and listen along to? It doesn't matter who it is or what they're saying. Or have you noticed um, any, you know, any videos or um, content, you know, looking a little, a little too close to others? Um, and if so, if that bothers you at all, um, I don't know if it, it bothers me in the sense that I care about creators and I understand from a, you know, an editing and work standpoint and just developing your style and who people like, what, how people recognize you and all that stuff that takes work and it's effort. And it's not just, it's not as simple as like, well, this is exactly what Miss could like, could like, could you imagine if I like got my friend to go get a, um, a didgeridoo or something like there's just those little nuances or even like um how she says like um what is it um like the talking about vaping and like i'll boot you out the door she has that phrase like don't let the good lord don't let the door hit you or the good lord split you can i get an amen like could you imagine that exact phrase during a whip and chat at the beginning coming out of somebody else it's a little like it's a little jarring. Um, so I think that's where the line crosses for me. Like it's, it's totally fine to take influence, take inspiration. Um, and even, even spe specific ideas and put a little bit of your own stink on it. But that exact copy paste is where I'm just like, I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't know if that's okay. At least to me, you know, um, because that all takes time and, to, and, and putting yourself out there and that's I think that's what people are looking for is honesty and and the realness and like they want to see a peek behind the curtain a little bit you know and that's kind of why you do whip and chats and why you do vlogs is to be your authentic self so when I see you know when I see a video that just mimics somebody else uh, so closely, you know, like I said, there's a threshold. It really just, <laughs> that's, all that I, that's like the best, <laughs> that's the best expression I can come, you know, there's just a feeling that there's just like, when I'm listening to, it, I'm just like, uh, yeah. Um, so yeah. And I don't mean to offend and just being very honest, like, and I think that that's how it would, it might come off to a lot of other people. So when I see that, my first reaction is to be like, excuse me, hi, um, in your head, you might think that this is the way to, to grow your channel, but I don't, uh, give it another, give it another pass, sleep on it and see what you come up with. <laughs> and like I said, if anyone is struggling with that, and needs it just needs somebody to bounce ideas off to because I, when I was a new creator I didn't really feel confident or comfortable enough to like hop on Instagram and be like hey XYZ person can I just talk to you about like my channel because it's some it feels a little self promoty too like oh this person just wants me to go watch their videos or give them a shout out or whatever that wasn't it like I just um but that's what I was thinking in my head is like, I was self-conscious about asking for help or asking for some sort of guidance or direction. So I kind of just went at it alone. And then over time getting on lives and asking some things here and there, but I'd say the pivotal point for me 
in putting myself out there because I was really worried is when I did a video talking about my, my thoughts on licensed artwork, I knew that was a really touchy subject and I know, I know that a lot of people that subscribe to my channel and I interact with um, do unbox um, unlicensed images where they don't know, you know, if it's stolen or not stolen and that's just not a priority to them and it's not something that they particularly care to dwell on or really think about. Um, with, and I still support those people and those channels and I can honestly call a lot of them some of my crafty friends. But when I first did that video, my sass and my emotion around how I personally feel about it definitely came out when I was doing, um, when I did that video. And I was worried, like, is this too much? I am I making a joke that someone might take personally or think that I'm make, making a dig at their expense? And I think one of the things that I neglected to mention in that video, and in retrospect, I feel like such a jerk, is I didn't really even talk about the fact that people might not have any other option if they want to do this craft from a budgetary standpoint. Not everyone is is um, capable of snagging a diamond art club anytime they see an image that they like. Not everybody is capable of doing a shop pay for easy installments of $60 on a you know, $200 uniquely yours down under canvas. Like not everybody has, has the means to do that. And to tell that though, that, um, that person that because they can't afford it, then they don't get to have that same anxiety relief. They don't get to have that same sense of calming that this craft brings people. They don't get to use it in the same way. And it can, it, not mentioning that or or having a, um, a discussion about licensed artwork can feel very exclusionary and sound like it's coming from a place of privilege and I understand that and I definitely acknowledge that and that wasn't my intention and I don't think I brought it up because that's not even something I was necessarily like I don't know I just didn't I didn't think about it so in retrospect, I'd probably do that video a little bit differently and, and make sure to sit down and come at it from different angles rather than, I don't know, I just worry about that video, but I hope I hope it's fine. But there was a, an edit, the unedited version of that video where I just left the majority of it in, had some more stuff that, was, that I could see people not but taking offense to, for sure. Um, not that that was my intention, but... I was just worried about it. So I tapped um, a crafty friend, Miranda, over at Diamond Painting with the Besties on the shoulder because she's someone that I, she, I respect her and her content and her honesty in her videos um, top, top, top. Like my number one person, like if I wanna know what, what the skinny is on a particular company or paint or uh, diamond, diamond painting kit or anything like that, I try to search if she's done a review on it first because she doesn't pull any punches. And in her whip and chat, sometimes she is like brutally honest. When she talks about um, the swim meets and the parents and stuff, I'm like, damn. <laughs> like she's not messing around, but I really respect that. So, and she does some unboxings of, um, budget um, budget companies and budget kits. And so I was like, this is somebody that I can, I want to present this video to if they're comfortable watching it before I publish it and just give me her honest, um, unfiltered opinion on how this might be perceived, how she's taking it, you know? And so I sent that over to her and she watched it. And in real time, she was giving me voice memos and sending me mess sending me messages like this is really good and then at a certain point she was like whoa bro <laughs> like you might want to pump your brakes here and she even said like we all really like you like everyone enjoys watching your videos we want to see your channel grow i just worry that xyz you know if it might be taken this way and so i listened back through that particular section and i made some decisions with what i wanted to keep in and what i didn't 
because she was absolutely right. And it, unless you get that second set of eyes, you're not going to really know because you're living in that, that tunnel vision or that bubble. So I think I would suggest if you're a new content creator um, and you're watching this, um, t don't be afraid to tap people on the shoulder that maybe have been creating videos for a while. And you can always publish your video as private and send someone a link. That way they can take a peek if they're willing to do that for you. This community is incredibly supportive and really does want everyone to succeed. And I've never felt like the mindset was um, ever me versus them, or I'm not gonna help you because that could be one less person that subscribes to that in my channel. Like that's not, that's not the vibe I get here. Um, and I don't want it, I don't, I don't, ever want to see it turn into that, you know, where we have, where there is somebody or, you know, people that are starting channels that are like, my own, you know, all I'm here to do is to pull people um, from this group. And it doesn't matter if I'm just copying, you know, word for word from somebody else, because my goal is just to grow my channel. Like, I was trying to think about it in my head too. Like, what is the end goal for if someone was to do that? So let's let's say we do we do have. I forget the name I used earlier when I was pretending to be somebody, but like, let's say you've got, um, you know, Thomas, who's a new diamond painter, and he watches my channels or she or whoever uh, watches my videos and is like, I want this. That's that's it. That's what I want to do. So I'm going to listen to it. I'm going to write down his intro. I'm going to um, take a look at his kind of foresty, woodsy background. I'm going to find that exact same template or something really similar on Canva. And I'm just going to copy paste, use the same font style, all that stuff. Because if, if his channel is growing, then that's how I'll do mine. But in my head, I'm like, but what is the, like, what is the end goal? Like, you grow your channel, fine. But I feel like people might catch on to that. And then I was like, is the goal just to get like free kits from Diamond Art Club or something? Like that's a lot of work to get, you know, a 50, 60, $70 kit thrown into you once in a while. Like I just, I'm having a hard time understanding like why, you know, like, because why, why I think a lot of us come to channels is to like, learn, like get to know people and get a peek into their personality and resonate with them and connect with them. And when you strip all that away, it's just like, I don't know. I don't know. So yeah, I don't know. It's something, I guess it's something I feel strongly about because I won't shut up about it. Um, but yeah, if you ever need any, any help in brainstorming, how to turn, you know, how to create content that, you know, is something that you'll really love and that you, that other people will, will really love. Not only myself, but so many others um, are, will welcome you with open arms because I think we, I think my goal, and I've said it before, is just to get more people involved with the craft and continue to grow it and expand it because then our small businesses will have more people making purchases from them. We'll have additional people that take the leap and um, start build, you know, start their own shops. We'll have more um, various styles of artwork and, and kits to pick from because as that grows and more people with different tastes, you know, jump into it, you'll get all of that stuff in turn. And so it's only beneficial for, I think, everyone to encourage more people to um, to start diamond painting or if there are other crafters to add this to their repertoire so I don't know I don't know I, I I don't I'm not worried and I've only been doing this since uh, late January early February but I don't think I'm worried that it will turn into what I saw with skincare um, you know, the, the hobby of skincare and the content creation, it was much more cutthroat. It was much more like, you know, there's whole drama channels devoted to like, can you believe that, you know, Jeffree Star, blah, 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 blah. And like, it just, it gets ugly. And there's like lots of like people sitting and doing like a, um, I do not know why it went in here. 
Oh, I wanted to see how busy the Chinese restaurant is. Maybe I will. I mean, it's not like Apollo's gonna roast in here. It's 46 degrees and I'll just leave the windows down. I'm gonna just see how busy it is because I'm not ready for a crowd. Um, ooh, it's, there's a lot of people milling in and out. No, thank you. There's a wait at the door. No, thank you. Um, there's just that part of the, um, that part of that community, like the skincare community, granted it's much bigger, but it was just kind of like this person said this person uh, did this. And can you tell that this person's using Photoshop and like, um, you know, their lighting is horrible. Like there was just a lot of like cattiness and just like people making videos for the explicit pur purpose of like cutting other other creators down. And I was such a small channel. Um, I, I did it for like almost three years, maybe a little bit longer. And I the most I ever got to, I think was like 400 something. So it's blowing up here on diamond painting compared to, um, you know, skincare. So I was never in the mix of all that, like the inner circle of, you know, the big skincare, skincare YouTube creators who had like literal millions of followers. But there was people that would make an entire community or their whole channel would blow up because of the drama that they would stir up and like just kind of like the nastiness or just it was just there was like a dark side to it that I really tried to stray away from and I feel like I might have even been hurting my channel by not participating in that because it was almost kind of like part of being in that community is being a little bit backhanded just being just not not um not devoting your attention entirely to what you're doing, which is, you know, trying to give people recommendations or trying to show people your experience utilizing certain products. So I don't think that's at all uh, what I, I've seen in the community with diamond painting. It's a lot more tight knit, a lot more family style and a lot more supportive. But I, I just, I hope that um, creators aren't coming into this community with that kind of like bent. You know what I mean? It's kind of hard to talk about, I guess. But I said that about, I say that about every topic that I'm uncomfortable talking about. Um, okay, so now I'm just driving around aimlessly. I'm trying to find some place to get some food, but there's not a lot of drive through situations up in this area. So I think there might be like a Qdoba or something over here. And then I can at least just make it like a quick in and out grab a burrito and try to munch on it in the parking lot or something. So that's that. Let me know your thoughts on that. And then let me know your thoughts on, um, on mixing it up, like doing a bunch of different, not a bunch, but like two different kits it's simultaneously from a content standpoint. Do you like just hearing about one until, you know, as far as working on it until it's done? Do you not have a preference? Does it matter to you if like one week I'm like, where the fun never ends. And then the next week I'm like, now I'm working on this. Um, does that matter to you? Um, and then the same with like Instagram. Do you, do you like seeing Instagrams that are, ooh, teppanyaki and sushi? Eh, no, that's gonna be, that means time. Um, do you like seeing Instagrams that are kind of, have that continuity of like progress photos of a single kit? Do you not care if it's chopped and changed and stuff like that? Let me know your thoughts because I'm trying to, I'm trying to brainstorm how to work on these bigger, like multi-month, five, six month kits without having to just show the one kit for five or six months. <laughs> There's Qdoba. Hello, darling. There's also a noodles and company. I could get some noodles and eat that in the car. What I, you know what I really want is Taco Bell but that's like another two exits away from where we're going. So I'm just gonna get Qdoba. Qdoba, Taco Bell for fancy people. <laughs> Let me know if you've not been to a Qdoba or, ooh, you know what, third question. Third question, third and final question. Are you a Qdoba or a Chipotle? Which one are you in the um, Americanized Mexican food? Because I have, we could have a whole video. We can have a whole video. I have very strong feelings. Um, 
Where is she? Where's my doba? Ah, <gasps> is it not? Is it closed? Oh my god, is it closed? Oh my god. <gasps> oh no! I don't see any signs for it over here. What in the world? No way. There's a Panera that's being opened. That sign clearly says Qdoba. I swear if it's, if they shut it down. Oh my God. Stay with me. I need your support through this trying time. Hold on. Oh my God. I think it's shut down. There, it was right here in the corner and it's for rent. You've got to be kidding me. All right, I'm just gonna, See, this is a moment that I've said this before in vlogs. I get fussy if an idea pops into my head of what I want to eat and then that thing is taken away. You have got to be kidding me. I guess I could just get noodles and company. Ugh, no, I'm leaving. I'm upset. Um, so that restaurant that I was saying was called, it's called Red Mountain Grill. Are you hot? It is a little hot in here. Um, let me finish this up. Okay, so now you just saw my my anger in action because I wanted Qdoba and I can't, it's, they're gone. How dare they? That's such a staple. Oh, jeez, Louise. What am I going to do now? Gnaw on my hand? I'm going to Taco Bell and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make the extra trip because I want tacos. Ooh, it's hot. Um, I don't even have the heat on. It, oh, it's, it's a sunroof. Okay, I'm yammering on. Um, let me know how you feel about the content styles. Let me know what you think about content originality, if it matters to you or not. And yeah, that's all I have for you. I'm going to stop and get some food. I'm going to get back down. Um, and... Yeah, I hope you enjoyed uh, the kitting up of Cozy Evening, too. I can't wait to get to that kit. I've been really on the fence of, will I like it? Will I not like it? And I've landed on, I'm going to like it. It's going to be fun. And I'm doing it for my aunt. So, I mean, I get a lot of joy out of doing these gift kits. And um, everyone that I've given a kit to so far has been really appreciative and really liked it. So that's it. Wow, the Burger Kings boarded up, too. There's this whole town. You can't get a burger, you can't get Diablo nachos. What are we, What? Are, why am I even up here? <laughs> All right, well, I'm gonna let you go. Thank you so much for watching. Um, don't forget to like, subscribe, share this content with friends, family members, anyone that you think may might take some value out of this content. Um, otherwise, thanks again and happy placing. We'll see you next time. Bye! Bye-bye-bye-bye!